Good afternoon. Welcome to the continuation of City Council's budget process. Today we're doing line item votes on both the operating and the capital budgets. Um, before members is both a overview as well as the actual amended amendment itself. We will begin with the administration operating amendments. And we'll begin with operating amendment number one. Amendment number one from the administration is to uh, accurately reflect the current number of policy analysts in the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. Uh, it is an $81,177 increase in 2024, and in the five-year impact, it was a total of $423,495 increase. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Operating amendment number one has been approved. Number two. Number two is to realign the salaries of various positions at the request of the controller in the controller's office. So overall, there is a $40,919 decrease in 2024, and the five-year impact is a $211,792 decrease. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Amendment number two has been approved. Number three. Number three is to adjust the food justice coordinator to the proper step grade and add insurance benefit costs, which is a total cost of $9,413 or $9, uh, increase in 2024, and the five-year impact is $29,835 increase. Motion approved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Number three has been approved. Number four. Number four is to add necessary benefits for the vacant assistant one inventory position uh, at a total cost of $4,327 increase in 2024, and the five-year impact is an increase of $23,212. Motion approved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Number four has been approved. Number five. Number five is to add benefits for the Ethics Hearing Board con Executive Director. Uh, there will be a $26,387 increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of an increase of $148,474. Motion approved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You're missing it. Uh, operating amendment number five has been approved. We'll now move on to the non-personnel amendments, number one. The first non-personnel amendment from the administration is to adjust the 2023 target budget estimate column to match the quarter three reports, which increases the beginning reserve fund balance in 2024 by $8,226,100. Motion to approve. Sorry, what? Any discussion? Yeah. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Number one has been approved. Number two. Number two is to adjust the TransDev or FVS number? allocation to add the PWSA target maintenance cost to the contract. Um, there is a total of $647,189 increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of $3,516,797. Motion approved. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm Number just, I'm operating just abstain from all these. Too. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, one abstention. Number two has been approved. Number three. Number three is to adjust the PNC Financial Services Group allocation to align with the approved numbers from Resolution 776 of 2023, which is a $19,915 decrease in 2024 with a five-year impact of $191,575 decrease. That's, that's for the public safety um, downtown substation. Motion approved. Second. Second brief discussion, please. Discussion, Councilman? Uh, director, or I mean, yeah, budget director. Uh, did you say decrease? It's a decrease. It, it is. A 20,000? Uh, and five-year impact of 191? Yes. I'm just curious, why would we be decreasing those allocations? Who requested? That's Councilman Cogco was able to negotiate a lower rate. But I'm bump. Thank and you. I would just add that's not all the Councilman Calkill has saved us over this year. We have Six more to come. Lower rate with PNC. Yes, okay. because they're the, the landlord of the building, so gotcha. they're leasing it to us. Okay. 
Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you so much. Thank you. Amendment three has been approved. Number four. Number four is to adjust IK systems allocation, um, which is uh, related to resolution 2023-2223 to align new budget requests with the contract. It is a $12,187 decrease in 2024 with a five-year impact of $151,241 increase. Motion to approve. Yeah, second. Discussion, please. Uh, what is IK systems? Direct, uh, affiliated with IMP? Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm. Amendment four mm. has been approved. Number five, one abstention. Number five is to add funding to centralize multi-department executive branch SAAS mm. applications in INP uh, with a $50,000 increase in 2024 and a five-year impact of $250,000 increase. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? One abstention. Uh, mm. Approval. Number six. Number six is to add funds for the PA Historical Museum Commission uh, grant match that was not bid out in 2023, a $25,000 increase in 2024, and also a five-year um, increase of $25,000. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? One abstention. Just to make sure you register an abstention for all these for me. Whoever's doing it. Abstention for all of it. So, thank you. Duly noted. Um, so now we will move on to the one capital budget amendment from the administration. The capital budget amendment is to reallocate $100,000 from the bituminous paving program and street resurfacing to flex beam guide rails and fencing. Motion approved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? One abstention. The amendment has been approved. That will now take us. You want to say something, Councilman? You don't want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, not right now. No, thank you. No, I don't, Mr. Chair. Okay. So we've completed the administrative amendments. We're now going to move on to City Council operating amendments, which is in your large packet, if you want to see the actual amendment themselves. I, so this I'm is the overview. This is the actual. I like the overview. I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. So we'll begin with number one. Number one is increasing mem ca member of council salaries to equal the average increase of all other city employees, which is $33,466 $33, no, increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of $264,773 increase. Second. Uh, so, uh, Director, uh, in increasing members' council salary is a city sitting member of council. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, we, yes. I uh, um, I have to gather my thoughts. Um, I fully support um, members uh, having a wage that is competitive and comparable with the the uh, work that we ask of this body to do. What, what doesn't often go out there, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was. Um, what often it does not go out there is the, the responsibility that members bear as fiduciary agents of this city. I had a, 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 a member of the media stop me this morning that wanted to talk about something else. And I said to the member, I said, the story today is that this body will allocate close to 700 million, a little more than 600 million, almost 700 million dollars of publicly collected tax dollars. That's the story today. If you wanna talk about that, I'm happy to engage you. Otherwise, I'm sorry, I don't have time. The responsibility of the members here to manage that kind of a budget and, and to do it in the best interest of the, the residents of the city, the constituents he represent, members are deserving of comparable and competitive salaries. So we went down this road, forgive me, was it two years ago? I can't remember now. Um, and um, it caused quite a, I can't think of the word I want, but yeah, it was, it, it certainly evoked 
public uh, comment. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, so uh, I guess I'm, 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 I'm going a long way around to say I'm going to support this. I won't be here to benefit from this. I'm certainly going to support this because I believe in the in, in your due compensation yes. um, that um, that this job requires. And yet, having said that, we had some back and forth with our legal counsel about a, a sitting elected, regardless of the body they serve on, that has the power to f vote in a fiduciary manner, voting for their salaries. Uh, and I just caution that we're probably going to open that door again. Um, but I'm willing to stand with you and for you in what you rightfully deserve as compensation. Boy, I hope I made sense there. I hope I did. President. So I do want to say I think that um, some of us are, I'm not certain, but the um, solicitor can, or city council solicitor can tell us, I don't think council members that are up for election in two years can vote for this. Only current council members who were recently elected or leaving. Oh, see, I forgot about that. Can vote for this part. And so, I, so myself, I can't vote. Even though I'm not running again, I can't vote. Um, I don't plan on running again, I should say. But, I hope, to right. live, I hope to live to the end of my term after this, all this stress. But anyway, so I will say, um, I think Councilman Coghill, you cannot vote. Uh, even numbers, I guess. Uh, myself yeah. mm -hmm. well. and who's the other one? I forgot all about yeah. that. In, but that was raised. Yeah, but part of the reason, let me just say real quickly, part of the reason it says that we have to take a percentage of whatever all the, you know, collective bargaining you can you can explain that but it also says that we can't diminish our pay so we're kind of like stuck in the middle because and we wouldn't even know this if people didn't bring this up and didn't file some complaints or whatever it was lawsuits. back then lawsuits back then but because of that it, they made it very clear what we're supposed to be doing and our law department and others made it very clear do you want to talk a little bit about it yeah. I mean, I can't just talk just briefly about if you, if the you can. lawsuit but I think that that was dismissed but I'm not certain that would be yeah. something for the law department but yeah I mean essentially I think you guys know exactly <coughs> What you can and can't do, you've all articulated it, but you couldn't, um, you can't vote on your own salary for, if you're sitting, but if you're voting on the salary increases and you're leaving, or you've already gotten your seat recently, I think you're free to vote. But I think everybody needs to disclose that you're, you're voting on your own salary increase. Um, if there's a tie based on those people that, um, of those people that are eligible to vote, and there's a tie among them, then at that point, because you've disclosed, um, you can vote to break the tie. So it's disclose and abstain, and in the event of a tie amongst those who didn't have to abstain, then you can vote so long as you disclose. So everybody can just disclose that currently. But doesn't you're the amendment on it. do that? Well, I mean, I don't know from whom. You all know who's I mean, who who's who's can abstain and who has to vote. I mean, I don't think that you know from a ten thousand foot view, just looking at this table, that we know who's up and who's not. So just disclose. If you can't vote, just say I. This is a, uh, my salary of a sitting position, and I'm abstaining from voting. <laughs> Thank you. Could you just maybe like guide us through if we need help here? You sure. Um, and the point that you're making is about the diminishment of salary. And so for over a decade, um, you didn't take cost of living adjustments or any that. kind of salary or anything. Say that again. And please. so be, for the failure to take a cost of living adjustment for over a decade, like 13 years or so, uh, I mean, everybody knows. You can just see you make a considerable uh, smaller amount than almost all the other city employees or any other director or any other elected official. It's like almost a whole another person's salary difference uh, it's um, it puts you all in a compromised position and so for council as a body to make sure that its members are not compromised financially um, have salaries that won't otherwise make the office susceptible to outside influence and so that's the rationale behind the statute that prohibits the diminishment of a public official salary and there's lots of case law about this when it comes to judges, you know, and as you could imagine, judges usually rule in a favor that <laughs> supports the judge's salary increase. So that's where the um, 
issue of diminishment came about as well. So you can think you don't want your judges to barely make a living or to be underneath what the cost of living is. Otherwise, that might compromise their judgment. Similarly, council members, we don't want you to have your judgment compromised because you haven't taken a cost of living increase in 13 years. And this time we're doing it, unlike other people, we're doing it on TV with televised meetings and, and talking Trying about to catch it. up. So, <laughs> I mean, I think you guys are getting, you know, pretty close to where you need to be. But there was a need to do this multiple times to make up for the past omissions of duty to do the cost of living adjustment. That's not even talking about a raise, which is another whole portion of it. We're just talking about trying to get caught up on the cost of living adjustment. This doesn't reflect today's 11% inflation. This does not reflect a raise. This is just trying to get caught up on the cost of living omissions that did diminish your salary for 13 straight years. Thank you. And I will say, I think most of us would do these jobs for free because a lot of us did them for free before you even got here. So, but things have changed over the years. I'm not conflicted because I am leaving right. office. It's motion right. to approve. Thank you. We, we motion to approve. It's not even. We're in discussion. Okay. Discussion. Okay. Councilman Cockhill. <clears throat> Thank you. So, what we're talking about voting on is a 3% across, so what everybody across the city. 7.1%. 7.1% right. increase? Right. The average, so yes. Um, we worked with OMB and they ran the numbers to see what every employee at the city made last year versus what they made this year. And the average of all employees increases from last year to this year is 7.1%. So we're essentially we're voting okay. on a 7.1% this, this, this increase. This is 7.1%. The amendment in front of you is for 7.1%. 7.1% increase in our salary. Is that right? I don't see it. I don't see that here. I so, always see is, uh, you know, across the board. So that's the average of the city that's what we're voting on. Yes. And it ends up being 7.1. Yes. Okay. And let me explain to me, Councillor, how, why newly elected officials can't vote on it. Or no, newly elected officials can vote on it, but us who have been here for four years can't vote on it. I don't understand that. It's about, um, you can't vote on you're uh, sitting on your on your sitting. I saw it, maybe it's uh, the ones that haven't run. I don't know. The ones who just got reelected. Yeah. Or haven't got reelected. No, it's the opposite. It's the ones. It would be the ones who. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. Be the ones know? that haven't been. Yeah, I didn't know this was going to be on the agenda today, yeah, so yeah, I don't really yeah, have yeah, any research. So, available so if I you. want this 7.1 percent to pass, I have to lobby here. the odd numbered council members. This is what you're saying. It should be right? the ones. It should be, shouldn't it be the opposite? Shouldn't it be the ones who are already? I apologize for putting you on the spot. I didn't know it was. I didn't yeah, know it was no, I, it's okay. I, you told me, but I didn't pay. They just got elected. I you just, can't. I was still working out numbers with you. two. <laughs> Let me look it up here while we're. Oh, I sponsored it? Yeah. Am I allowed? I know we talked about this when, you, when you were crafting it, okay. but I don't remember because there's been so many things that have happened since then. Let's leave this on, on the table. Like yeah, we're going to yeah, leave why it don't you leave table, it open. Right? And, Let's get and, that yeah. answer at least as to who can vote can on I just, it, who can. Yeah, just, thank just give you. one more point of clarification. This is a 7.1% increase from your 2023 uh, pay rate, which in 2023, it is 81,137. Oh, what was presented in the mayor's budget is a 3% raise to $83,571. Okay. A 7.1% raise okay. from 2023 would be $86,970. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, that, that's it. I just would really like, to, I guess, to know who can vote on it and who can't. It just seems odd and funny that yeah, okay. ones that have been in office, but ones that are just newly elected. I don't understand that. As long as it passes, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a state law issue. Is that right? Yeah, I have to, okay. I'll have to look it up and it get is. back to you. Okay, well, you know, we want to follow the law. I just was That's curious. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. It's good to know. Yeah, it's That's it. Sorry, you've been so busy preparing for other things, right. but thank That's you. This is, you know, I commend you all for, you know, putting a lantern on this one. Making it its own separate amendment. Also, one more. But so, I mean, just 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 to make the note that you know, not not paying elected officials as what you end up having is people who are independently wealthy or have the means 
running for office and and people who really can't afford I mean, I, I, I'm a believer in succession planning, and, right? And I have spoken with young people around, and, and they say, yeah, I mean, that salary, you just, you can't live on that, right? Like if you have kids, if you, you know, whatnot. So I think that, that alone is a reason to have the salaries of elected officials. I mean, not to be insane or over what the, you know, but, but to be a reasonable salary that someone who would be taking on that amount of work would say, yeah, you know, I could, I could do this job and also pay my mortgage and pay my student loans if I'm a young person and pay for you know childcare and all these other things. So I think that's worth mentioning. Otherwise, you just kind of get wealthy people running for office, right? Which we see <laughs> all the time. So, so I would just want to say, can I just say, I just put the amendment forward just because because the question about diminishing our salaries and the law saying that law department saying we should take a, the per collective percentage. That's why it's on there because we were advised to do that. Any other member first round, second round, Councilman Cross. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Chair. Uh, it, I, it, the question is directed at either of you. Uh, having gone through this, was it two years ago? I, I honestly yeah, can't I remember. Yeah. I, for, correct me if I am mistaken. I thought this was uh, chartered that the 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 uh, understanding that electeds are due the percentage increase in cost of living wage is to be commiserate with all city employees and it's not something we are making up here but is rather required by our charter right and during the I'm sorry and during and if I may I'm sorry um, if um, during act 47 it was the the due diligence, the fiscal due diligence of this body to only accept half of what we were entitled to via the charter, which is why we are so far behind on just as simple as cost of living. Uh, and so I'm, I, I bring that to a conclusion to say I'm kind of confused why we have to discuss this, although I appreciate that we have to, um, why we have to discuss this if it is clearly spelled in the charter that the council is due this cost of living increase by charter. Dan, do you have the, uh, Solicitor Friesen, do you have the, that pool, do you have that home rule charter in front I of do. you? I do, I do. Mind? So, um, well one, this is a, this would be one of those matters that would require like public hearing, which is why we schedule the public hearing at the end, because it's in the home rule charter that salary matters require a public hearing. But the language specifically in the Home Rule Charter can be found in uh, Chapter 310, Powers of Council, which is the language is essentially lifted from the judicial statute, and it's the exact same language. And it says, to fix by resolution the salary of all elected city officials, but no elected city official shall receive a salary increase that exceeds the average percent of increase in salaries and wages paid to all city employees. So that includes the union employees. That's correct. So some employees got a larger raise than you did, but based on the average um, of the previous year's salary. So further, if the salary paid to elected city office holders shall not be diminished during their term of office. And so every year you didn't take the cost of living adjustment, you were diminishing your salaries during the term of office. And we're trying to correct that now. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so I believe we're going to leave this open and so that our uh, solicitor can do a little bit of research and then we'll come back to who would justifiably can vote. So that'll take us to operating amendment number two. Operating amend amendment number two is to increase the salary for the assistant city clerk um, for an increase of seven thousand three hundred twenty-two dollars in twenty twenty-four, the five-year impact of thirty-three thousand three hundred thirty-six dollar increase. Uh, motion to approve. Second, Second. with this brief discussion. Discussion. Yeah, I just really want to say I want to thank Ashley because she has really carried us through a long time. Um, you know, it helped yes. us a, a, a tremendous amount. You know, we have an amazing clerk that's been here for a lot of years, um, but Ashley is always ready to fill in there, and I just want to thank her for that. Thank you. Any further discussion? And it w she will be incre getting increases, right, to get her up to, right, is that right? Do we I mean, we're just setting 2024 for now, so. But we talked about increasing her over the, uh, to get her back up higher. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Operating Amendment number two has been approved. Number three. Number three is to increase the salary for Deputy <coughs> Clerk One in the Council as a Body uh, budget, which is a $7,948 increase in 2024 and a five year impact of an increase of $33,087. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, just briefly. I think it's important for the public. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's just important for the public to understand uh, the perhaps a bad analogy, but the glue that the clerk's office provides for council they are they are what keeps us together on track uh, uh, archived and uh, fully functioning and we uh, we could not operate without them i'm happy to support these amendments thank you any further discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed one abstention madam are you still abstaining on all these bills yeah okay so one abstention and number three has been approved. Number four. Number four is to upgrade a public engagement specialist to public engagement supervisor in the council as a body budget, which is a $17,653 increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of $73,494 increase. Motion to approve discussion, Second. please. Discussion, Councilman? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, is Are we creating a position that will be known as public engagement supervisor by doing this because we don't have one now? Right, and is that the proper procedure by which we create a position simply by salary increase? I honestly don't know, I'm just asking. I don't know. And then my second question would be, um, what's the total salary of that position, please? Because we don't know that, we just know what it would increase by. Um, the current salary for that uh, position is $55,888. Um, and it would go to seventy one thousand nine hundred five dollars. Um, <clears throat> I can answer half that question. Yeah, I can, I can find, I can, I can find my way there. But I want to know procedurally yes. if we just we can create a position yes. simply by putting in the budget. Yes. We're not putting it in the budget. We're we're increasing a salary for a position that doesn't exist. It's creating a new position. It's, it's taking out I mean, the public engagement specialist and adding a public engagement supervisor. So we eliminated a position and added a position, and the total impact to the budget is 17653. In 2024. In 2024, uh, and a five year of 73494. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Just abstain. Just, I'm just going to abstain abstention. today and I'll discuss tomorrow. One abstention. Operating budget number four has been approved. Number five. Number five is adding the processing archivist to the general fund in the council as a body budget. Uh, they were previously funded through a grant. That is a $57,321 increase in 2024 and a five year impact of $242,000. $676 increase. Uh, a motion to approve with discussion, please. Second. So um, our archivists, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to them as well too. They're, they're uh, a, a pair of unsung heroes uh, that I don't think get the, the kudos that they deserve for records management. Uh, and the, and, you know, it, 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 it could be perceived to not be important in this moment in time. But if one wants to go back 25 or 30 or 40 or 50 years, the, the wealth of institutional knowledge that they will provide those that come after us with you know a very um, a cohesive and collective package of, of documents is, is just invaluable um, and I think they deserve I think they deserve to be compensated um, rightfully I'm happy I'm happy to support that please thank you councilman Warwick and yes I'm so just to clarify, this is for one archivist, yes. correct? Who uh, currently is based on a grant, is has is making forty four forty four four forty, and then we will add the position, and and then in, you know increase it to fifty seven three twenty one. No. 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 So you're just, it's being paid out of the general fund rather than a grant funded position. Right. Um, that is the total cost of salary oh. and benefits. Oh, I'm tracking. So, so in fact, 
the their their salary is remaining the same. It's just we're moving from grant funding to. I believe it's still an increase, just like okay. the regular thirty I mean, percent increase. Okay, just to be clear on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to say there's there's a few positions here with increases, and I think council members are always like have a little bit a little bit of angst when we're creating or increasing anything, including our own salaries. But I think what people need to understand is over the years we haven't done a lot of this stuff. But the other thing is we're expected to do, and our staff is expected to do more and more lately. And there's just it's just so much that, and only so many people that can do some of these jobs. And so I just want people to understand these are this is the cost of operating a city that is almost available to the public 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And most of us are through some form of social media or something. But some of these things are just to help some of the people doing amazing jobs. And I do want to say that the archivists have done. An amazing job with the city and i did say to madam clerk if you ask us if we want somebody who can write legislation or if you wanted somebody who does the archivist work council members might just say you know somebody who does the legislation but we're fortunate that we have dan friesen but the law department also can write legislation and has written legislation and does write legislation and should write legislation if council members request it mm -hmm. so with that said i think that there's a lot of um positions here that we, we don't typically do, and I just want people to understand. I mean, there was other people were saying we should hire more people to do more things because, honestly, if we had more people working, we could have people catching things that don't have RFPs, catching pe catching waivers that shouldn't come through repeatedly, extending contracts that shouldn't be extended, and knowing when those contracts should be um, you know, should be coming up and that there's timely things happening. None of us have that kind of staff. Not, not on this side for sure. And so I just want to make sure that I say we're trying to get to a place where we can do that. We just had a conversation, the budget director and I, about that very subject. So with that said, I just want people to understand mm -hmm. it's the cost of Any further discussion? Stuff. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any I'm opposed? Abstain. One Same abstention. Distance. One abstention. Um, operating budget number five has been approved. Number six. Number six is to add a legislative projects manager to the council as a body budget. Uh -huh. It's a ninety-seven thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars eighty-seven three. Sorry, let me start over. Ninety-seven thousand three hundred eighty-seven dollar increase in twenty twenty-four, with a five-year impact of four hundred nine thousand four hundred sixty-six dollar increase. Uh, a motion for, with discussion, please. Second. With discussion, Councilwoman Warwick. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Finger, I mean, yeah. Okay. Oh, so. Um, and I, I do want to preface what I'm going to say, and this is my first time doing this, right? So um, this entire packet came in at 5 p.m. last night, and so there really hasn't been time to, I, I think, adequately discuss all of it, right? This, that's not on any one map. This is just the whole, so that, that's just a process point. I don't know what the workaround is. I understand the timing is tight. It's budget season, and and it may that may just be the way it is. So, um, but of course, when we're talking about um, these positions, it makes it difficult to talk about because we're talking about our colleagues, right? So this you know personal. So and you know and I that's not something that I prefer to do here at the table, right? But I do want to say that as far as I, A, a I'm, I'm not, to, and, I, and I will let other members, you know, w w would like to hear what other members have to say. I'm not clear, A, on what this role is, first of all. And, um, but I will say that, you know, we are a legislative body and so it is critical that we have a solicitor, which we do, right? But, um, and again, this is all inside baseball, so I, you know, for the public probably, but I, from my perspective, the primary purpose of having a solicitor, at least for me, and I'm not, I can't speak for other members, is to have help writing legislation because I am not a lawyer, right? My team, I, I, have, I have some uh, legal interns on my team, but we do not have the legal expertise, you know, that is required to write good legislation. And hence, 
you know, and I know that we can access the, the law department, but it is very helpful to have a solicitor uh, on the council side of the hall to do that. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to see more of next year. But before we add another role to that process, I'd kind of, I personally would like to see the, the current role that we have kind of get solidified a little more. That's, that, that's what I would like to see before adding an additional role. Um, so that, and I, I will let other members take it again, and also just the job description here. Um, so I'll so, let other members. Sure, so be, I'm gonna use my prerogative as chair just to step in before going to Councilman Krause. So I was the original sponsor of this particular piece. Um, this is what we spoke about at the holiday party, Councilwoman. The, ba the, ba the main idea here is if you were at the state level and any council legislator at the state level wants to begin working on legislation, wants to begin exploring a project, there's dedicated staff to do that work. Right, so it's not solely on you as a legislator or you and even your staff. There's an actual area where all those members go and say, hey, I need research assistance, I need background assistance, and I need drafting assistance in doing this. And yes, I agree, our law department should also be able to assist with that. But the idea here is to have a dedicated position on the floor that all members can go to and say, here's the level of assistance I need legislatively. That's the, that's the intent behind this. Councilman Kraus, sorry. <laughs> um, so we're on number six, right? For yes, sir. I just want to make sure I know where I am. Uh, one thing the council. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So one thing the councilwoman brought up, which I am in agreement with, is creating positions without having a full understanding of job description. Uh, and we don't have a job description for this. Is that correct? At this point in time, that is don't. correct. Yeah, the title, I'm sorry, if I can, the, sure, the title was derived um, by working with the budget office in terms of what was most appropriate to insert into our budget based upon other positions right. throughout the city. That's how. Right. So, right, but we're sort it of. It wasn't randomly created. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, sorry. but we're kind of running a credit card on something that we don't quite know what we're buying yet. Philosophically, I agree with the, the idea of having someone available, um, what's the word I'm looking for, available equitably across all nine offices equally distributed that if anyone wishes to go to them to, for a legislative assistance or experience in crafting is oftentimes, I, I crafted a public urination bill that I thought was gonna be the easiest bill I ever crafted in my life until I ran it through the law department and I realized all of the complexities of what I was creating simply by saying you can't urinate in public, okay? It blew my mind, but it, it was a really good learning experience for me. So philosophically, I, I can believe that this can be helpful um, uh, to members, especially newer members that are, and we have two new members coming on that want to get acclimated, and, and generally new members are anxious to get legislation on the table. Councilwoman Warwick, you've done a great job of getting a number of pieces that you were passionate about passed already. Uh, and so to have that assistance by someone who's experienced, I appreciate. I do have reservations about creating a position that does not have a clearly defined job description. I, We'll vote this, but I implore who would be responsible for this to have a clear definition of what this position is and how it will meet equitable need of every member across the floor. Oh, so, so yeah. to briefly, sorry, to briefly respond, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I will take it upon myself to work with both the solicitor as well as the budget director and whomever else is appropriate because um, this position will be held within the uh, clerk's office so i'll also work with the clerk to make sure everything is appropriate and we will come up with a full and robust job description member member oh. it's under dan freetson good i'm sorry yeah Supervised that's what i his, it's 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 housed in the clerk's office but supervised, supervised by the solicitor by yes. the uh members that come in with the legislative agendas. 
Me members that come in with legislative agendas are equally passionate about having that piece see the light of day and, and, and meet completion, regardless of what that piece may be. Some may be conceived bigger. <laughs> some, some may not have the full attention of the body, which I have been known to put on the table. Having said that, I, as long as there's a clearly defined equitable distribution that every member has equal access to have his or her uh, legislative considered in a comprehensive and respectful manner, and that's part of the job description. I can vote for this. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I saw a couple of hands go up. Madam President, <laughs> then Councilman Strasberger. Thank you. I just want to thank you for putting this forward, and I think that you've been here long enough that you know what some of the needs are here. But I do want to say also that Solicitor Friedson is and has been working on job descriptions for the entire floor, and 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 a lot of our people. A lot of our people that we have with some of the jobs that we have that we we don't have clear understanding of what people's titles and rules are and what they do and so he's working on that and I will say that he's also going to work with the HR department because they're the ones that have to ultimately do some of this stuff um, I'm sorry but I just love all the faces <laughs> but I will say this that I think that these are some of the things that we said that we wanted and I think that the the um, the fact that the reason you put it in is because you've heard what council members over the time have been saying that they need. And so with that said, I want to thank you for putting it forward. Thank you. Councilman Schausberger. Oh, and I will also say, I think Councilman, uh, uh, I do want to say, Solicitor Friesen has been extremely busy doing other things um, for council. And so maybe he's not doing the writing of legislation as often as people would like. But that is something the law department can do. But... Um, I also think that he's been busy meeting with uh, other people and authorities to make sure council is in good standing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, um, for, for putting this in and for getting the conversation started. Although I do have to say that to me, this seems more like a nice to have than an essential. Um, we are, you know, everyone knows where we are in two years and um, I would feel more comfortable having a discussion about this type of new position once we know we're in the clear <laughs> a couple years from now, um, in the spirit of, you know, not, not including non-essential items or positions um, at this moment. I don't know what the solution is. I mean, every, every, the, the challenge is there's, there's not exactly consistency in every council office, right? We all kind of operate slightly differently. Um, I don't know what the solution is if it is helping our staff to use creative technology or systems to make us more efficient so that they're not so much doing the legislative pieces around the edges of you know the massive amounts of incoming everything all the time but have more time themselves to do the legislative piece along with the law department so maybe we can work together to become more efficient as a, as a body and as, as with our staff and leaning on our solicitor and, you know, figuring out the best way to lean on and to communicate with the law department um, to accomplish our legislative goals. But I just don't know if a new position is going to be um, necessary to accomplish those goals right now. I'd like to explore it in a couple of years when we have more, potentially more funds to, to play with. Thank you. Councilwoman Gross, did you have your hand up? As well. Thank you. Um, we have added in the last two years a number of roles onto the city clerk staff. So, um, and I, I, I definitely was one of the people maybe over many years ago who said there, you know, it would be great to have more legislative research capacity in the clerk's office. Mm -hmm. But then since then we've added the four community engagement people, we've added the solicitor, we've added the solicitor who's also handling interns. <laughs> and then I thought one of the community, but I don't, it wouldn't have been in this budget, so I can't, it's not in front of me. I thought one of the four community engagement people was already working full time under the solicitor as a research person. No, no? Yes. They've offered yeah. to help. Can I just you know, say, on, yes, on yeah, legislative yes research, and we've so. given one position back to the administration so they could have somebody. We can take that back too okay. if you want. So this is a little confusing. You want to go there. So I, I also think that. Um, you know, I'm happy to see the increase later on um, in, a, in a, an amendment we're getting to to increase the salary budgets for our own 
district office staffers um, because they are doing everything from soup to nuts. Um, from comms to intake to, to, in my office, a great deal of policy and legislative research. So I really appreciate their work and I'm glad to be able to have more money in that pot. Um, so I, I, but I'm leaning against this one as well today because it's another $100,000 or so. Um, and it seems like we still do have, we're still settling out with the new staffing that we've had, including a social worker, right? Um, to be that liaising with all of that new capacity, right? So we have, yeah, so we have different functions that council is trying to do, and, and I, I understand that, and so I think we're still working those out. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> no, anyone else, first round? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any in opposition? No. No. Four I, aye. Five eyes, three in opposition. Uh, operating amendment number six passes. Um, number seven. Councilwoman, she asked who voted no. It was Councilwoman Gross, Councilwoman Warwick, and Councilwoman Strasburger. Oh, okay, interesting. Thank you. Number seven. Number seven is to increase the salary for the community health and human services policy manager in the council as a body budget. Um, which would be an increase of $4,056 in 2024 and a five-year impact of $16,879. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Operating amendment number seven has passed. Madam Clerk, just for the record, Councilman Coghill registered I votes. He'll be back but he, for anything that he'll miss while he's out. Um, operating amendment number eight. Uh, number eight is to increase the salary, salary for the city council solicitor, which would be a $10,134 increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of $42,188 increase. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Operating amendment number eight has passed. Number nine. Number nine is to upgrade the Deputy Clerk 2 to a Deputy Clerk 2 Supervisor, which would be a $14,822 increase in 2024 with a, no, with a um, five-year impact of $61,777 increase. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Operating Amendment number nine has passed. Number 10. Number 10 is to add a nighttime economy project coordinator to the Department of Public Safety Bureau of Administration. It would be an $81,100 increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of $342,019 increase. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Second it with discussion, Councilman Warwick. Yes, yeah, so this is another one. Again, this is a process issue, so, you know, clarification around this role and yes, who's asking for it who hey. you know I no no not I don't understand Mr. but that's Pena. what I would like to Rule number 10 operating the yes yes nighttime economy council Warwick. yes so that it's just a question what is the role what yes. is the job description etc I believe this was proposed by councilman cross yes. so I'll defer uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, did I catch my breath? Um, yes, uh, I, I spoke with uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Pollock about uh, adding this position as well as uh, the uh, Director uh, Schmidt this morning as well. It's Clearly this has been a passion of mine since I came on the body. Um, uh, and the, the role of the office has taken on considerable expansion in terms of not just being sort of a, uh, a nighttime or nightlife food beverage coordination, but really a citywide, almost 24-7, 365 coordination of, of the industry or business of food, beverage, and socialization. Um, and so with the increase of the workload, I think it's important that, especially as I leave and the work that I've done to make certain that that office gets developed, um, that it remains healthy and viable and has the resource that it needs to continue to operate and do the work that it's doing. So that's why I requested to do this position. Have you met Brett? You, it's, it's, a, it's a, if you will, a, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for, a mirrored position of Brett and would have the same job description as what Brett would have mm -hmm. and just provide um, Allison with the kind of resource that she needs uh, to, to provide much of what's being expanded within that office that wasn't originally um, considered to be part of, of that office. And so that's why I'm asking for that. So out of breath. Thank you. Any Thank you. further discussion? I'll simply add, um, I'm assuming you'll be having some more conversations with this office before you leave. Sure. I'd be interested in participating. I recently had a, well not recently, about a month or a half ago or so, had a uh, meeting with our nighttime manager around not just sort of being reactive to how we function, but being more proactive in terms of managing our nightlife, especially as it relates to smaller related concert venues, things of that nature. Um, and so um, it'd be interesting to see if this coordinator position could help play a role in that. So um, it's a conversation I'd like to participate in. That's all. So you opened the door. And so I'm going to walk in it. Okay. Um, and the, the, the argument I have made from the day I walked in the door, thank you, Councilwoman, is, is to be proactive, to plan and manage. We, we interject uh, in, or insert police or public safety officials into situations that could have been avoided if we had clearly planned our strategies in advance. Um, especially um, uh, right now in terms of how we are still three years now, I guess, out of the pandemic, is it three, two, two or three years, trying to understand the impact it had on food beverage, on socialization business, the importance that they play in our overall economy, our tax dollars, and the revitalization of areas like downtown. Do we want to see downtown be healthy, alive, vibrant? Do we want to reduce public, uh, public miscreant behavior? Absolutely we do. Here's the way that we can do that. Um, nature abhors a vacuum, right? If, if there's not good activation, there's going to be bad activation, right? So what does that activation look like? Like, and how do we bring it alive, keep it alive, and keep it healthy and vibrant and all those things? So, uh, you know, minimal investment, planning, and strategy could significantly reduce our public safety cost in, 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 in the overtime that we spend to police situations that only fail because we failed to plan and manage. Thank you. Thank you. My simple response will be <laughs> yes. will also be part of the reason yeah. why part of our conversation about Sorry, are we reacting is because it's, it's housed within the Department of Public Safety. And so we sort of have that lens over it, which is in many res response, many reasons a reactive thing in to begin with. Um, so did it make sense to pull it out of public safety to now give it its own landing on office place within the structure of the administration. It, we did, it was a conversation we were having. So. Yeah. so you opened that door. And so I'm going to walk through that one as well. From the, very, uh, from the very beginning, I begged for this to be an economic development position and not a public safety position because it viewed it as a public safety you know, uh, uh, event. I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. Uh, and that it was setting us up for failure in that we need to make certain that we have enough police officers to interject a situation once it goes bad. Well, wait a second. Why are we beginning with that kind of a mindset? We should be beginning with a mindset of good strategy, good planning, good management, economic development, and understanding what the industry contributes to us. So I sacrificed 15 years of my life to like hope that that would come to fruition. And if leaving the body and having planted the seeds that the members behind are saying, okay, I get that, I'll fight for that, I will leave a happy man. Thank you. Thank Any you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank Any you, opposed? everybody. Appreciate Operating it. Amendment number 10 has been approved, number 11. Number 11 is to increase the salary for the program development coordinator in the Department of Parks and Recreation. It would be a $2,999 increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of $12,484 increase. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Operating Amendment number 11 has been approved. Number 12. 
Number 12 is to add an editor videographer to the Department of Innovation and Performance. The it would be a $67,918 increase in 2024 with a five-year impact of $291,661 increase. Motion approved. Do you second? Second. With, with discussion, Councilman Wilbert? Yeah, so this is another one. It's a new position. I guess, again, is, is it council president? I'm, I'm not sure who introduced it. So what is the job? What is the need? What's the role, et cetera? We are 12, Mr. Chair. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, this this I was is 12, not yeah. Not the sponsor of this. Yeah. It's a request from the um, cable, cable Bureau. It would be in the cable bureau, so the, the folks that run the city channel that uh, do all of the city council I, sessions. I don't know, but they requested it. Yeah, I don't know. I can tell you their need. Okay. I mean, that's all I'm asking. It's just for the public, what, yeah. for myself, I, I you know. You, we weren't putting I, I used in, to it chair, and I talked to him about this. What's happening now is not only do they do city council, they also do the school board. But not only, but, oh, I'm sorry. Citizen Police Review Board. Review board. What? They do, they do various public things. They do us, they do the, I think the Civilian Review Board, they do the, they do the land bank, I think they do the school board, they do multiple things, right? They don't do school board? They used to. They used to. They used to, so we used to do school board. But I think they do school board too. The problem is, and now the mayor's office has them doing community meetings in the evening. The problem is, is that because they're union, contract, union contracts, they have to have a regular work hour. They, they can't do the flex time. So I know what they wanted to do was to hire at least one other person so that they had an evening schedule. So that when they had, like right now, when they were sending people to the <clears throat> evening, they would have to give them overtime, they'd have to do other things to make the evenings work because they didn't have enough staff to do all the things they have to do for us during the day and run meetings at night. I know they needed between one or two people in order to have a split crew. So you would have dedicated people during the day, nine to five, and then you would have another group of people who were dedicated sort of three to 11 so that they could cover the city both in the evening and during the day. I knew that. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Operating Amendment number 12 passes. There was one abstention, of course. And now we're on to number 13. So number 13 has a part A and part B, but overall um, it is to show the th a 3% increase to union positions with ongoing CBA negotiations. Part, uh, part A um, is salary increases for fire, paramedics, and PJCBC employees, and that is budget neutral. Because again, we've talked about this at several of the council budget hearings. There was seven million dollars put into the human resources budget under salaries that was meant to backfill this once the administration completed the CBA agreements with those unions. So this does not add any money to the overall budget. It just reallocates that amount from the pot in human resources to these budgets. And it, also it's important to point out this number is almost guaranteed to change once we reach, uh, once the administration reaches an agreement for all of those CBAs. We're on 13 We're A and B. 13 A and B. And B is to uh, show the salary increases for the PJCBC employees um, in the Parks Tax Trust Fund and the uh, RAD DPW Trust Fund. Those will be increases because paid out of the trust funds and there was not money set aside in those yeah. to reflect those increases but, but i'm sorry i'm just jumping in here yep. so, yeah. are you telling me these are imp uh, these are revenue neutral revenue neutral the the part b because there's money in the budget just right. put in human resources that was meant to pay for these once the cba is agreed to so once the cba is agreed to that money will come out of human resources and the budget will be amended to reflect the accurate amounts in fire and EMS and for all the PJCBC. Um, this, can I get to, I'm sorry. Who has the floor? Who has the floor? Did you okay. Me? Thank you. I 
Madam President and Councilman Wilson. I just want to say real quickly, th this is it was showing zero in the budget. It was showing zero, but so I asked you to put more in. so yeah. we have some at least uh, realistic uh, idea. Yeah, I don't know how realistic they are. Yeah, I know it's not made up. None of us one, know. Yeah. But at least it's something it's, better than so not. So it does reflect a dollar yeah. amount. Yeah. Again. We're going to have to change that at well, some point. Well, we also vote on that contract, some of this, con when they come to us, so then we can say this is what it is in the contract. This is what it is. I don't I wonder, think we get to do that. I wonder if we that. can say this is okay. I'm just, no, I'm looking at you don't, you don't want to do that. Well, I might want to do that just because I'm with the game plan, but okay. Councilman Wilson? No, I would never do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, this is for 13 A and B, right? Yes. Okay, so does the 7,000 that you were talking about, does that equal up to the... Sorry, if I said 7,000, that was wrong. It's 7 million. Thank does you that equal for up to um, I, I think... Uh, I think this is actually less, the 3% is less than 7 million. Okay, what is the 7 million? What is the 7 million? I mean, million? so it'll just stay in that... Yeah, yeah what, then, what, then, what, what is 3%? Oh, for... Maybe it's in the packet, but I didn't open the... I would have to run those numbers real quick for you. It's not in here? It's split out um, per uh, like position. There's like 12 pages that covers all of the increases. Yeah, I feel like it would be in the details. Which one is the big pack? It's in the details. It's just not summarized as to what the total is. Number 12, no, 13, 13, oh, that doesn't say, well, it says 3,800 for EMS. Those are for the, the trust funds. Uh, sorry, uh, Deputy Director Price, um, who is wonderful and watching this in the office, just gave me the figure. It is. Two million three hundred seventy-seven dollars. Three two million three hundred seventy-seven thousand three hundred sixty-one dollars. Um, that is the amount that is taken from human resources and put into these each of these respective budgets. So that would total. be three percent for A and B. That's three percent for A. For B, we're just adding money to those trust funds because they come out of trust funds. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So three percent only adds up to three million. Not only, but. It's yeah, Roughly, it's less than yeah, three, yeah, three million yeah. in twenty twenty four. So there's still be four million in that. That is correct. So what's the purpose of? Well, we don't know what the actual numbers are. But so we're this is basically a placeholder. So it shows that there's something. something could, be there's something. Yeah. could be three percent. Could be two percent. Could be eight percent. None of us know. Yeah, believe me, when I saw that come over, I was like curious to know what to expect. Yeah. But it is interesting just to see what was you know um you know what's available in hr so thank you mm -hmm. thank you um councilman Moore. oh no that answered my question right that there's money in hr just sitting it's like eight million or something it's seven million okay. again we don't know no no but what's just sitting just so there's there, there are funds dollars. right aside that are sitting just in case for this yeah so there's seven million just in case dollars right, for right. for the the fire EMS and PJCBC. Currently, we're just moving about two point four million of that. That is not an accurate number. I am very confident confident in saying that that is not an accurate number. And you're going to have to reopen the operating budget, similar to how we did with police last year. Once the administration comes to an agreement with each of those unions, this is just a placeholder that we're showing it in a different place in the budget i'm trying okay got it thank you we we should not touch the rest of that seven million dollars because we don't know how the agreements are going to <laughs> any further discussion seeing none all those in favor say aye, aye. any aye. opposed affirmative recommendation sorry 13 has been approved uh, Bill Operating Amendment 14. Number 14 is to decrease the transfer to the Stop the Violence Trust Fund in 2025, 2026, 2027, and 2028. There is no impact in 2024, 
And the five-year impact is there will be $12,712,696 less transferred out of the general fund. And that is to go in, um, in concert with the legislation that Councilman Lavelle presented to cap the transfer at $10 million. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. I'm aye. staying today. Thank you. Any opposed? One abstention. Operating amendment number 14 has been approved and on to number 15. Number 15 is to increase the transfer to PAYGO to increase ELA funding in the capital budget. So you'll see another capital amendment later on related to this. Um, that is a $78,036 additional transferred out in 2024 and with a five year impact of $425,817 additional transferred out. Um, those numbers were derived from the uh, reduced negotiated uh, contract with um, tr Transdev FES for, for maintenance on the fleet. Motion approve. Second. Second with discussion, Councilman Cargill. Yeah, I just want to remind members, um, there's a targeted fund and there's an untargeted fund. The targeted fund goes through oil chains and things like that. So this targeted fund, untargeted fund goes towards you know, um, we, we, we pay that as we go. If we, lose, if we need an engine, we pay it. So, so the untargeted fund is always subject to change. We, we may or may not keep up on it. So the, the, real, the real issue here is the age of our fleet, okay? And that untargeted fund is gonna be greater than what we're probably setting aside because our vehicles are old and require a lot of work. So we were fortunate enough to get a, I thought it was over 500,000. It's over the life of the life of the contract. Yeah, yeah. So, so we we got that refund, but that's going to go into paygo, and it was important for me for that to go back to the ELA for new vehicle purchases because ultimately that's where we need to be. Um, this is just really all band aids until then, but that's it. Thanks. Need Councilman Cross. So, just a quick, couple of quick questions. Your microphone, my guy. Your Sorry. microphone. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know why I even turned it off. Um, so a couple of quick questions, having served on the LA board, um, and now Councilman Coghill uh, uh, taking sort of the role I had, I guess, kind of. Um, questions that I have are this. Uh, the complexity of the fleet, understanding the fleet in its totality, it services multiple uh, agencies throughout the city, everyone has their priorities, all those kinds of things. Um, the funds that we're, we're seeing here that are being transferred into PAYGO, forgive me, help me to understand what it is. We're, we're taking money out of PAYGO, putting it into ELA at the sum of about uh, $78,000. So um, there will be two parts to this. There's a second amendment in the capital budget that you'll be voting on later. Okay. So the first part is there were savings found within that contract. And right. instead of just letting those savings sit in the operating budget, Councilman Coghill is proposing that those savings be transferred out of the operating budget to go into the capital budget. And later on, there will be a capital amendment with the same dollar amounts to add them to the capital uh, equipment acquisition line Perfect. in the capital budget. Happy to support. My next question then is this. Uh, when uh, uh, then Councilman Gilman was serving on the council, uh, he introduced past legislation where we actually auction off aged out vehicles uh, for surprisingly high dollar amounts. Sometimes, I was yeah. shocked at the kinds of money we would get for that. And those uh, allocations were then uh, factored into the LA budget for they, they those funds always stay with the LA that they they, yeah. they just the ELA manages the auctions and it goes right into their checking account so I don't know that you would know this or not but I'm asking you perhaps a question you can't answer that process is alive well healthy still yep. operating and producing dollars for yeah. the ELA yeah shout out to Jamie Jones and the fleet team she manages that process at this point I used to do that in my previous life but um, gotcha. on the other side of the hall but good Yes. Yeah, no, good Good work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Operating amendment number 15 has passed. Operating amendment number 16. Number 16 is to add funding to the Department of Finance to transfer to the Pittsburgh Land Bank for a land bank manager position. There will be no impact in 2024, but the five-year impact is $522,953 increase. Motion to approve. Second. 
Discussion, discussion, please. Discussion, Councilman yeah. Krause. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, can you, uh, why, why would there be no impact uh, uh, or? Um, because through 2024, <coughs> it's funded with ARPA dollars. Okay. Uh, and uh, forgive me, then uh, the five year at uh, 522 is uh, um, funded through operating dollars. Yes. And is there any way to lessen the burden on our operating dollars and to find other ways to? to fund that position? So I'm willing to do that as we move forward, but because of the way the ARPA, ARPA dollars work in a contract between the city and the URA, we had to effectively come into 24, we'd have no land bank. Like we'd, we'd, have, we'd be operating and all of a sudden everything would cease to operate. So we need to put some amount in there, which essentially covers the manager in a part-time position to, in order to be able to continue that work while we work to do what you're asking for. So this is sort of a bridge to get where you're asking for us to go. So I'll be able to call you next year to ask you if, if we've achieved the goals. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll support. Thank you. Councilman Warwick. So, so just to clarify, this is, so for the land bank, the, for the current land bank manager, it's covered with ARPA and this is to cover when the ARPA runs out. Is that correct? So the, after are we 2024 a poor federal guidelines, we cannot use ARPA dollars for staff. Okay. There I'm can tracking. still so be this operating is, dollars that can be expended for other purposes. It cannot be expended for on staff. On staff. Okay. So then we are just, so then for the, for the, the forward looking years. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Councilman Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the amendment reads, Add transfer to the land bank for land bank manager position. I just want to clarify that this is actually more than one position, right? Because th there's currently 70. Here. So we're this adds the 90. I'm sorry, this I can't do the calculation in my head, but anyway, it adds it to get to, to get to get it to the total of you know 183, right? So current currently in the Pittsburgh land bank, there are actually three positions. Um, that there's the manager, and I apologize, I can't remember the young woman's name, um, from the URA who also assists. Emily Kotchak. Hmm? Emily. Yeah. Yes, thank you. There's Emily, and then there's a part-time admin that mm -hmm. also pr provides support. Yeah, I just wanted to, that be reflected because uh, you know, it's more than just one position because it just says man manager position. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's all good. I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. So I we'll get you. more than just, yeah. Councilwoman Gross, then I'll. Sorry, yeah. Did you already go? Yeah, I already went. Sorry. Sure? Yeah, yeah. Um, so. We just had the post agenda with the land bank, but we didn't discuss, uh, not a post agenda, but budget hearing with land bank. We didn't discuss this. So there's basically no revenue. But there's also no financial support from the URA. And so all of the land bank positions are city funded, but our <coughs> like the management or you know the oversight is not at the city, it's at the land bank board level. I'm not sure I understand your question. So we're funding the U jobs that report to other people. Yes, the, the, the land bank staff is housed within the URA. I don't remember when, our, our chair may remember, but about at least two years ago, maybe two and a half, three years ago, we entered into a cooperation agreement with the URA to provide staffing support. But within the URA structure, the land bank was not a part of that structure. So then you need to provide resources for that work to be done. Yeah, I'm just kind of contemplating that the, the, we've talked about this many, many, many times. Uh, no. About kind of where is the long term operating costs that, and how it should be structured. That's a conversation we have to have. This yeah. is to get us in a place where we can then have a very thorough conversation about what is the future of the land bank. In theory, if the land bank really does its job really well, in 10, 12 years, it'll go away in theory and it'll pay for itself correct 
Um, or it'll be unneeded, right? But this is sort of Basically, a bridge yeah. to get where Councilman Krause, where you, where we collectively as a body have to decide what's the investment into the land bank. I'm just going to say something very high level. Um, and at the highest level, we have both a backlog, which we talk about as our treasure sale properties, the ones that have been on in the inventory for a long time. But then also in the budget hearing and recent post agendas, we talked about how there are lots of other properties that are either dead end properties or delinquent properties that actually are not in the first bucket. They're in their own separate bucket. Um, now we have the Mictal Amendment at the state level that can attack the second bucket. So there are two jobs to be done, basically, two backlogs. And they're probably both around 10, 12, 15,000 properties. We don't really know, right? This, the one, the first bucket is actually diminishing since we have not been taking properties really for a very long time into treasure sale. So that actually has is, is le fewer properties than it used to be. Uh, but then we have this other policy and revenue problem, which is that we have a bunch of other properties that aren't paying taxes either. And those are the ones we haven't taken through treasure sale. We may take them to the municipal sheriff's sale. Um, and that's still work to do. What I think we're all, what Councilman Lavelle was saying is that hypothetically, if we reduce both that multi-decade backlog of the treasure sale properties, and then also get our arms around the other dead end and many other properties that are out there that are vacant, abandoned, or and are tax delinquent, but that we haven't taken either through treasure or share of sale. If we start to do that, um, we may not. We, you know, we may be able to handle that amount of activity in our own finance, real estate, and law department. So I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it there. That vision <laughs> that someday we may not have this huge problem hanging over our heads. <laughs> and that would be that would be nice. Yes. So I'll just leave it there. And it'd be an economic benefit to the city. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Operating amendment number 16 has been approved. Operating amendment number 17. Number 17 is to increase salaries for non-member council staff in the city council district's budget. It would be a $270,000 increase in 2024 and a five-year impact of $1,080,000 increase. Motion to approve. Second with discussion. And before discussion, just to clarify, because I know it jumps out as a big number, that is both salary and benefits, correct? No, it's just salary. It's just salary? Increases. Okay. Councilman Cross. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate it. Uh, so uh, non-member council staff is a very broad definition. Um, and we have, uh, we assign different roles, different capacities, different um, actions to different members of, uh, of, of our staff, and therefore the salaries reflect what we ask of them to do. Do we have a sense of how each staff position is itemized, what that increase is gonna look like for each of the, the staff firs per office? Certainly I'm from wrong. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Budget Director. It's just a thirty thousand dollar increase to the allotment to the uh, each uh, to each office each office bucket that they have to then do whatever they to then so choose to be, be assigned their staff. as yeah. they wish to be assigned. If it, can I just shed a little bit more light? Yeah, and please. Just echo yeah. That? So it is up to every council office to set your staffs and salaries as you as you please. It does not have to be the same in each office. Right. Currently, in the twenty twenty four uh, mayor's office budget, they are proposing. $180,000 per council office for staff and salaries. So this would increase that to $210,000 per council office for salaries. I started here, I think it was 50,000. I believe that. Yeah. Just imagine what it would be like to run your office on $50,000 a year. Um, the, I'm, uh, Can you repeat? It was 50,000 when I started here. That's what our, but we were in the throes of Act 47. Oh, they can't hear you. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. But we were we were in the throes of 47, and I think it was of like 53,000 or something that we had to run the offices at that time when I came in. It was, it was like, next to impossible. It was very, very difficult. Uh, the reason I asked the question that I asked was there was a time when our previous budget director, Bill Urbanic, was trying to structure more of a sort of like position and pay grade kind of a, of a structure to council offices. That doesn't exist, right? Yeah. yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah. So uh, the the mayor's salary, the the forgive me, the um, mayor's budget came over again at one hundred and eighty thousand, yes. and and its councils wish to increase it to 
210. 210, which is an increase of 40,000, give or 30, take, per 30, office. 30. 30. 30, 30 oh, I'm sorry. The mayor's office. It's no, 270. To, I believe it's around one, a little over 170 now. It's between 170 and 175. So overall, it would be. I see. Okay. About 30. Let's say about 30. Times nine is 27, $270,000. And then over a, I say, uh, over a five year increase of a uh, of million dollars. Ah, I'm not done. I'm just trying to recollect my thoughts. That's all. I, you know, it. it I, I just think when we have these kinds of discussions in an open air market like we do, and people tune in and watch, they understand how and why we uh, make the kinds of allocations that we do at budget time, and how. You know, I said this earlier in my comments this morning, uh, how the work that I have been able to do and the work I have been able to do. Uh, here has been largely dependent and a, a direct result of the staff that I've had over the years and, and the, the importance that that staff is duly compensated, um, you know, fairly for the work that they do and that they provide. And I suspect many members of the public don't realize that our staffers don't show up at nine and leave at five uh, and take Saturday and Sunday off. It's you marry the job. It's nights and weekends and cell phones on, at night and emails at two in the morning and uh, you know community meetings on the weekends and all of those kinds of things. So f for for the public at large to understand how and why we want to to offer the kind of uh, commiserate salary uh, that makes us competitive that we attract bright talent to come and fill these positions is why we're allocating these kinds of dollars and that it's justified that we're doing this and that um, and that the public understand why we're doing what we're doing. So I'm, I'm happy to support uh, Budget Amendment 17. Thank you. Councilman Cockhill? No, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased to see this as well. Uh, <coughs> that can reflect paychecks beginning in January? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so we would have to, to figure out first we got to pass it. You, yeah, office. you have to work with the, the lovely clerk's gotcha, office gotcha. who does an incredible amount of work for all of us. Sure, um, right, right. And they will help you uh, make any changes to this. Perfect, perfect. Okay, that was it. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Wilson? Yeah, I just wanted to talk about this amendment because, you know, whenever you know, I put this forward, I mean, initially I'm always thinking about how much our staff how much the staff does to support what you know what makes neighborhoods work and just the amount of um the amount that they're underpaid to do the job and i think i know that they take the job because they want to work for the public and they want to work for that public that official but you know when i look at their salaries sometimes i think that there, there, there needs there has to be um more of an incentive to work in these offices and to stay here because the public likes, you know, the public really appreciates staff members that they know can get stuff done. So, and I know that my staff, we work with several departments in, in the city. And when I look across the table, if they're working with them, I, I know what the other, the other side of the table makes. And, and, I, and, and my, you know, my staff, our staff deserve that as well. And this isn't a significant increase either. You know, we all have three, four staff members, this is, you know, 30 over, over there, if, if, if members choose to, choose, choose to use that. Or we continue to talk about, you know, count city, um, council-wide positions, and, you know, there is some concern over continuing to increase those positions or change them or whatever, and some members feel that they should have that expertise in-house. And this allows them to, you know, start to create that. You can hire for a position create a position or, you know, in your next hire, you know, shoot for that type of uh, talent. And, and I, I think it will only help Pittsburgh. So thanks. Thank you. Councilman Schausberger. I didn't want to have it go unsaid that this is also an opportunity for us to um, have more flexibility to pay interns. Yeah. Any further discussion, Madam President? I just want to thank Councilman Wilson for putting this forward. Um, it was, I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor for it. Thank you. 
Oops, okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Operating Amendment 17 has been approved. And finally, Operating Amendment number 18. Number 18 is to increase the transfer to PAYGO to add East End Community and Economic Development. Um, this would be $500,000 additional transferred out in 2024, and the five-year impact is just that $500,000 additional transferred out. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? See, Councilwoman. Just some clarification on sure. what this is. Yeah. So these are dollars that are actually going to go to the URA. Um, as we sort of all acknowledged earlier this morning, Cap Councilman Burgess has effectively been a CDC for his district, right? He has sort of really much led the economic development charge. However, he is leaving, but there's still actually a lot of work that needs to continue that he won't be able in a position to be working on. So we acknowledge that he has the choice program. There's still work that needs to to be done to finish that out. Um, there's the Avenues of Hope stuff that is happening in the district and, and a number of other projects that I know just because I'm at the URA. There's the, the, the Coliseum. There's other things that are going to happen that he won't be actively working on. Therefore, we're transferring it, the resources to the URA so the URA can continue doing the, finishing those projects and doing that work. Any further discussion? Madam President. Yeah, why doesn't the URA already have, they have so much funds we gave them already, why are we giving another half a million? Why don't they just tell the URA to do the, use the funds? Because, and we've said this, well, I've said this many, many times, the URA actually doesn't have as much resources as we tend to say they do. Um, you and just then, gave them like 150 million. And then two, yes, the majority of that is going into one thing. But a little portion of that could come to this. Well, it can't because those are matching dollars for a federal grant that we've received. Um, so we can't move them. But my point please, is. Please don't tell me they don't have 500000 from the money we've given them that they couldn't put towards this program. Because I'm not going to believe that. Okay. Sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Uh, capital Amendment 18 has been approved. We do now have capital amendments that we need to go through. Um, so, uh, Director McDivitt. Capital Amendment number one is to reallocate $100,000 within the street resurfacing budget by reducing concrete street upgrades deliverable and creating new deliverable for Blenheim Court concrete street upgrades for $100,000. A motion to approve with discussion, please. Second. Second. Can uh, I ask who put it forward, and can you give us just a little you know, overview of what the Blenheim Court Concrete Street upgrade is? I'll defer to Councilman Schrossberger. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes. So um, many of us have cul-de-sacs that are concrete, and residents do not wish to pave over an asphalt. Um, concrete, as we know, is long lasting, but much more orders of magnitude more expensive to repair. Yeah. And um, when we have one big concrete budget and you have a specific project that you're promising constituents will get done, it gets swallowed up by the entire budget unless you segment it out and have its own line item to ensure that it has the funds necessary to get done. This is actually in District 9 currently, but it was a promise that was made uh, to the constituents that it would get done when it was still in District 8 before reapportionment. This is me keeping my promise to my constituents. Happy to support. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilman Coghill? Yes. Uh, do, do I understand this right? I'm going to ask our uh, budget director. Did, we're allocating $0 for 2024 for concrete. and There's a million and dollars in 2024. There's a million dollars. Yeah, so this would, it would still, it wouldn't reduce the amount for Concrete Street. It would just allocate $100,000 specifically for this street. Yeah, okay. I thought you told me that we didn't have anything allocated. In, in maybe in the twenty yeah. twenty five, um, two thousand twenty five, yeah, twenty twenty five. The, yeah. the paving budget is real low, um, and in the 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 first September budget the mayor presented, there wasn't any money in that one. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, Councilman Cockhill, they added in the second budget there was money added for concrete as well as block because there was it. none in block Got as it. well for the right. Yeah, because the there's many budget. many Belgium or you know um, what do they call it? Not Belgium block. I guess it's Belgian block. Uh, but, uh, the beginning of your block. 
Ligonier block? It is actually from Ligonier. So that's why they call it Ligonier block in Pittsburgh. Cobblestone. It's Cobblestone. Yeah, Cobblestone. Yeah, Cobblestone. Yeah, same thing, right? Uh, Ligonier block sounds yeah. better, though. Yeah. So, so I've been told by engineers. So. So, so, you know, that's a major problem in my district. We have these hills, and, you know, once they settle, they need pulled up, and then they need repaired, and it's very expensive. But uh, I'm glad to see that they put that money back in there. Thanks. Councilwoman Gross. Thank you. Um, I do understand the desire to line item, um, and certainly we, we all kind of have these projects that have been waiting a long time to get done. When we're talking about paving with concrete, lesson learned the hard way because of Penn Avenue reconstruction, which the city waited 20 years to do, right? I kind of came into office when it was already, I think, partly underway for phase one. Um, repaved all, did the concrete sub-base, huge expenditure. Luckily, most of it reimbursed by the state because it's state road, right? But we did the work, and then we started doing the water lines afterward. Mm -hmm. And so it's really hard to wait 12, 15 years, right? It was a really negative impact on business. Then have a project go on for a year, year and a half. Some businesses literally went out of business because of the sidewalks being closed for their whole city block, all that kind of stuff. And then to have it all look so perfect and new and then immediately seeing construction cutting into it. So I would really ask that you make sure that nobody's gonna be building anything new because when they build anything new, they're responsible to the line out to the middle of the main and so they cut into it. That um, so any any real estate development that might be happening there, it's I see it's a cul-de-sac. It looks like a residential cul-de-sac in Regent Square, maybe. Um, mm. That the water lines have been replaced, all the laterals have been replaced, and the gas lines have been replaced. And is there any other underground utility? Because it's just because you're not going to get it fixed again for another 50 years, right? And that that concrete street should last 50 years. <laughs> so make sure that all that's done before yeah. that. I just made a note of that. Thank you. <laughs> any further discussion? Madam President? I'm just curious. So are we, you know, the Domi's taking us individual streets. If we just add funding and say this street we want them to pay, or that's the street we want them to I mean, do? Council, has, council controls the budget. So, I mean, so. they're okay doing this. Okay. So I'll, I'll do it for an amendment. I, I would for an encourage. Amendment. Um, I'll do it for an amendment next week. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Second round, Councilman. No, Clark. yeah, I just want to say. And, and, sorry, Bobby. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> microphone is okay. I've been hitting okay. you all day. Microphone's okay. <laughs> Um, in regards to what Councilwoman Gross was saying, you know, I don't know if it's poor communication with the utilities or what it is. I just had a street done myself and they just dug it up. I mean, who is responsible at the city level with, for communicating with whether it's PWSA, Pan American? Is it Domi? Can I respond, to, respond to that. We actually have someone who's actually really good at it, but you have to give him the authority to, to say to the. Um, to the yeah to the utilities no i mean or, or to say that they have to do whatever they have can to I, do can i because as soon as he says no someone complains to somebody else and then they change them they change whatever his direction is so you know asphalt's one thing concrete is a whole new ball game it's mm -hmm. six times as expensive at least so i would say let's double check triple check whoever is responsible with coordinating with the utilities and i guess they can't always predict that a line breaks um you know and it's an emergency situation so but if they're planning if they if we know the age of those pipes are under there then i'd like to see us plan with pwsa or pen american and tell them we're planning to do it and coordinate together it just it just makes sense i don't uh, understand why we're tearing streets up but we just replaced yeah. it can i respond yes, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i um i know just from being on the pwsa board pwsa People's Gas, others plan five years ahead. Our Domi does not have the luxury of planning five years ahead because they don't have the um, confidence in our five-year budget that they will have the funds to be able to say, yes, definitively, like four years from now, we will be paving this street. So that's part of the challenge. It's not, it, you know, certainly there are <laughs> improvements we can make still, certainly with concrete streets. Um, which is just a waste of taxpayer dollars if, you know, we have a Penn Avenue 2.0 kind of situation. But um, I know that that is a struggle. The utilities are able to plan ahead. We aren't as easily able to do that. And right. something I'd like to get So, so if they plan ahead, of. five years ahead, it's as simple as a phone call, right? And saying, uh, is this scheduled to be torn yep. up? You're right. To the utilities. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. You, you were saying, so who is responsible for that? It's Domi. It's for the dumb. coordination. I don't want to say the person's name on TV because that's okay. Yeah, right, so. right, right. But right. I do want to say that they do try their best, but there are a lot of other things underlying. And if you, 
want to give you their information, you can call them and. No, uh, no, I, I'm not. I'm really not concerned who. I, you know, I'm concerned about. And it's one. I think it's one person. I, I guess I'm concerned about if the information's out there, as Councilwoman Strasburger said, if we know People's Gas or Columbia Gas is scheduling to replace the lines within a five-year period, and we schedule it to be paved, regardless if we know we have the money for it or not. But once we have the funds for it, I mean, shouldn't the simplest thing be like uh, PWSA? We just want to make sure you're not planning to replace these lines before we go digging the street up. That's all. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Capital Amendment 1 has been approved. Number 2. Number 2 reallocates $337,405 within the Complete Streets budget by reducing the neighborhood traffic calming deliverable and creating two new deliverables one for the fifth and Moorwood intersection improvements for two hundred thousand dollars and one for beechwood linden wilkins intersections improvements for one hundred thirty seven thousand four hundred and five dollars motion to approve second question seeing councilwoman uh, were we? yeah would you mind clarifying yeah. i'd be happy to clarify so these are two intersections that are in desperate need of reconstruction not just traffic signal signal replacement but like full reconstruction <clears throat> because of pedestrian safety at one of them one of our neighbors um was was killed walking across the street at the beach woodland and wilkins intersection this year initial improvements have been made um we have committed to you know really tackling it as a safety improvement and then Fifth and Moorwood has been, um, if you can picture it, it's pretty close to Carnegie Mellon, very well trafficked by pedestrians and those you know, using non-motor vehicle um, modes of transportation and um, has been a priority since, I think, since um, former Mayor Peduto was sitting in this seat. So we finally have the stars aligning with Carnegie Mellon um, committed to spending money on their portion of it, PRT committed to spending money on improving their bus stop, and the city just needs to do their part. And I, um, as you can imagine, full resignaling and intersection upgrades would be much more than say 200,000 or 137,000, but in this case, um, we are putting in the amount that we believe we need to match for future grant funding for these projects, which I know Domi goes after very aggressively and most of the time gets. So if we have the money in place for design and build for the matching portion of the grant, that's what we have in here and that's what we're proposing. Thank you. Any Councilman Warwick? So I just want to clarify as well, this is more for my constituents, right, um, for this, uh, this amendment and the next one. Uh, so again, these are two large projects that involve signals and that where we are putting in a, a, a small amount in, in hopes of getting a much larger grant. And so because of that, we are calling them out under neighborhood traffic calming. However, I just want to clarify that I, you know, I have worked with Domi, members have worked with Domi on, on these items and um, standard traffic calming right, just sort of speed humps, some lines, those are not grant funded, those are, so I did not call out Greenfield Avenue specifically because Domi would like to use their data, or like use their process of determining where the most need is, right, using their data and whatever other factors and they have decided that Greenfield Avenue is, is one of those and is indeed going to happen. There'll be an engage page up soon. But, that, but we didn't, or I shouldn't say we, Domi did not want to have like a snowball effect of all council members putting in for just basic speed humps and lines so that they could do, just do it the way they do it, right? Using their equity scale and, and whatnot. So that is why for, for Greenfield, <laughs> that is why Greenfield Avenue is not called out as a line item. So Greenfield Avenue, I've been assured many times is indeed gonna happen this year, just as part of the standard neighborhood traffic calming projects. That's all for me, thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Operating Amendment Number Two, City Capital. Excuse me, Capital Amendment Number Two has been approved. It was one abstention. Number Three. 
Number three, reallocates $100,000 within complete streets by reducing the neighborhood traffic calming deliverable and creating a new deliverable for 10th and mural traffic calming for $100,000. Yes, yeah. yeah, second, very, very brief discussion. Uh, so this is a project we're able to take in-house and do for significant le significantly less money uh, than uh, if we were to to contract to do it out. Uh, and so it's a significant cost savings and one of the reasons why we put it forward uh, as a capital budget amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Capital amendment number three has been approved. Number four. Number four would add $400,000 in parks tax funding uh, to park reconstruction for Marmaduke Park upgrades. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Operating. Capital amendment number four has <coughs> been approved. Number five. One abstention. Number five reduces slope failure remediation by 150,000, reduces public safety training facility by 855,000, reduces park bad. reconstruction by 495,000, and increases facility improvements, city facilities, and creating a new deliverable for the city county building elevators one, two, and three for $1.5 million. Motion to approve. Second. With discussion, Councilman Warwick. Um, yeah, so I'm, I, to be honest, I'm not really sure how to vote on this because uh, what is being cut in order to pay, and I understand that you know we need to or fix our me. elevators in the city county building, but this item that's being cut is the engineering funding for the Serpentine Drive wall in Shanley Park. Um, if anyone's familiar with that wall, you know, with that street, Serpentine Drive, it is part of the Vintage Grand Prix. Uh, that's a huge event, right, where people come from all over. Currently, this past year, um, as part of the course, you know, normally it's, it's like this beautiful going down Serpentine Drive, but the wall is broken. We have these ugly jersey barriers and yellow paint. And so the cars are driving like five miles an hour down this really, you know, not so great looking road at and I, I, this, this and and also work has already pre-engineering has begun so i'm not sure how to vote on this because i'd like to hold on to that funding for the wall would there's a couple would you allow for a quick interrupt yeah of course please it would be my recommendation to delete the removal from the slope for your recommendation and instead remove take 150 from paving That'd be my personal recommendation. I'm not doing that. I'm just telling my personal not recommendation. Doing that. I'll take it from grant money. Um, don't say anything. That's again. You still I, have I don't the floor, have a but. because I don't, again, this is all like sort of. So I don't. I don't know where to take it from. Right. I don't know where else it should come from. But <laughs> I, I do feel pretty strongly that this is Shenley Park money and not City County Building elevator money. So. You know, both of which are city assets. This is more, I think, than just a District 5 thing. This is, I mean, you know, this is a, a city asset. So, yeah. Can I respond? Are you done? I'm mm -hmm. Okay. I've got Councilwoman Gross, then Madam President, and then Councilman Cockey, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do realize that we have sometimes emergency expenses. Um, I do want to point out that $855,000 is coming from the public safety training facility master planning and I just want to say that um, I'm supportive of this day but it's complicated and so just for the listeners out there who are concerned about creating an indoor police firing range and shutting down our outdoor firing range which we've talked about now for you know many years at council is that it's it's not so clear I have constituents who are um, one an indoor range who are opposed to the master planning money for the site because they don't feel they want to be implicated, just because they want an indoor range. They don't want to support a future public safety training site that would m be similar to the Atlanta cop city situation, right? They don't want a military compound. And so they don't want to be folded in, um, in that ask. But I have the exact opposite, constituents who want an indoor safety uh, uh, indoor firing range 
who are in support of the master planning dollars, the for $855,000, and because it would conceivably accommodate the indoor range there. Um, and then I have constituents who really don't care about the range at all and, you know, a, a same thing. So it's almost like there's four quadrants. Um, so it really isn't a clear call to action. So I'm supportive today of um, reassigning this to the more emergency repairs that need to be done. Um, and I will just maintain what is the clear call to action for a lot of constituents, which is that we can create an indoor firing range for you know two to three million dollars. It does not have to be at the Veterans Fair site. Mount Lebanon just built one to qualification specs. It would be the same size that we would need. We could build it anywhere else. We don't need to a hundred million dollar or more giant project to create an indoor firing range that both our police officers want and our citizens want, and um, we should do that because mm. we don't need eight hundred fifty-five thousand dollars of planning in order to build a two to $3 million indoor firing range. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I really don't want to take it from any of these projects. The bottom line is our elevators are breaking down. There was a, someone stuck in them for, I think, six hours. The one day, 45 minutes another day. And these are this is our responsibility. And this is something more, more imminent where someone's going to be hurt or something could happen. But what I would say is, I mean, these are things, stories I'm getting, and this is the, why I've gotten the request to add funding to the elevators. Um, but I would be glad to work with everyone on where we take this from. And I, I actually had a conversation after you and I talked, Councilwoman, with the director, and we're going to try to find some other place to take it from because I'm not trying to stop any project that's important to anybody, especially something that could be a landslide or some other catastrophe. But what I'm trying to do is find something that's least impactful in a, in, or more of anything that's public safety concern in any fashion. I'm trying to take it in something that, that, that can be moved. Um, including I looked at stuff in my own district, which is probably getting, like, I think one of the least amount of monies when we're really not, we're in the middle, huh? You're in the middle, We're yeah. in the middle, mm -hmm. but we don't know. The one project may not be here until I'm dead. The, yeah, the majority <laughs> of this $4 million for <laughs> Thaddeus Stevens. I better quit saying that because somebody asked me in the media the one day if I was dying. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I will say that what I want to do is try to work to get this to a better place, but I, we have to put money in to the buildings. And whether it's we stop all this funding that we're doing, when, we t when I get upset about the grant funding, it's because we can't even do the functions we're supposed to be doing. And if the county would start doing the things that they should be doing, then we'd be in great shape. But the bottom line is we're doing some, we're doing county responsibility, city responsibility, and other responsibilities, including some of the private stuff that, which, that could be funded. So with that said, we have to find money somewhere to fix the elevators. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Buckhill. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm assuming this is the Grant Street side of the elevators because the other ones are new. Right. Yeah, Grant Street, okay. Fourth Avenue side. Yeah, I know. I, they, I, I mean, they don't work half the time. So, so we have to find the money to do it. Um, if we can find another source other than bringing from the wall, that would be that would be great. I would support that. Now, I remember when we were replacing the roof on this place, and the city pays half, and the county pays half. Is that the same way with the elevators? So, the city owns two of the elevator banks and the county owns the other two. Oh, so we own the break broken down. We list. own no. Okay, we own one of each. Nice. We own the elevators on the, the fourth street side of, course, of right. the building. Okay. Um, and the uh, the county has the elevators on Forbes. Right. Um, so there's the elevator bank. At yeah, the so we both got one Ross. new one and we both got one. I mean, they, they, the, the elevator bank in the corner of Forbes and Ross has not worked in the past 40 years at least. And those are county-owned elevators. So the county relies on the city's elevators. So Rich Fitzgerald did offer us a half a million dollars to work with. So we just got to get it in writing. So. Got to get an MOU. So that's for the one, is it, is it for the whole bank of elevators? Three? It would be, yeah, for Elevators Bank 1, 2, and 3, yeah, which right. is, again, the ones at Grant and 4th in that corner. Right, right. And the county owns it, one's the opposite side. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they work. They work better, slightly. Yeah, work better. That's scary. I've been stuck in those elevators, personally, so. Right, right. Jeez, I'm afraid to go in this building, I swear. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's our expense, not the county's. No, no split. No. Uh, that's all. Thanks. Mm.
Is it me? Yes. It's Thank you. Just briefly, I, I would be happy to support if we could find a different funding source for this. I understand the importance of the of, of the law uh, repair for the councilwoman, uh, and appreciate how we not only do we and city employees travel those elevators, the general public does as well too. You know, we have an obligation to protect. So I, I know we can find a happy medium here. I don't know procedurally, Mr. Chair, what we do uh, with this. We hang on to it till tomorrow. What do we do? My recommendation would be to vote it now so that it goes on to tomorrow's agenda and between now and then work on an amendment for it. For the funding source? Yes. Okay. Okay. Councilwoman, you good? Yep, that okay. works for me. I'll, I'll do that. Uh, second round, Councilman Warwick. No, that was. I was just going to ask <coughs> oh, okay. the procedural what we should do. Yeah. So, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, operating budget. Excuse me. Capital budget. Excuse me. Number five has been approved, and that takes yeah. us to number six. Number six yeah. reallocates fifty thousand dollars within slow failure mediation by reducing the rapid response upgrades deliverable and creating a new deliverable for Boxton retaining wall upgrades for $50,000. Motion to approve brief discussion. Second. Thank you. So this is mine. This is in the neighborhood of Elts Hoover. This is on East Warrington Avenue as it meets uh, Boxton. There is a, I don't know what you call these walls. Peter, maybe you might know. It's sort of like a corrugated metal that holds up the hillside oh, yeah. for the street. Mm -hmm. But the, the corrugated metal, we've suffered this before. It rotted once we repaired. It's really rotted. Now the street's in danger of collapse. For us to go out, it would be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're gonna do this in-house for the cost of 50,000 and that's why I'm asking members to support, please. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? One abstention. Just keep your pets away. That, I'll get it. So we've approved uh, <laughs> capital amendment number six on to number seven. Number seven increases capital equipment acquisition by $78,036 in 2024 and $425,817 total through 2028. And this is in coordination with the operating budget amendment that Councilman Coghill had uh, presented earlier. A motion to approve with discussion, please. Second. Second. So the, the increase in capital equipment acquisition is defined as our vehicle, our fleet. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to support. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Capital Amendment number seven has been approved. And finally, Capital Amendment number eight. Number eight adds $500,000 to neighborhood economic development for East End community and economic development as a deliverable. And this is again related to uh, operating budget amendment number 18. 18. Yeah, motion to approve for discussion, please. Second. Second. Why is there, or may I, Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. uh, is there a, uh, why is there a repeat? I don't understand why it's listed Step. twice. You have to amend the operating budget to increase the transfer out to PAYGO. And then once you do that, the PAYGO money will be in the capital budget and you have to add the line item in the capital budget. Perfect, thank you, appreciate your help. Yep. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any Abstain. opposed? Abstain. One abstention, capital amendment number eight has been approved. That takes us back to operating amendment number one, um, which we left open on the table. The short answer for members is no member is allowed to, is supposed to vote on anything that they, any legislation that they benefit from unless they fully disclose that benefit. So in this case, each one of us would need to disclose that yes, we're voting on our own salaries and then take the vote. Right, so we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Yes. Because we're not. That's so, true. any further discussion? No. This should be roll call, then. Yes, so, it has yeah, to be roll call. I do, I do. So, so we'll all get a vote as long as we disclose. Yes. Okay. You, you have to disclose okay. that you're voting on your okay. own salary. So it has nothing to do with who's just because newly elected or who was formally no. elected. Okay, you good. Have to give that didn't make any sense to me. So, okay, great. Yeah. Appreciate the clarification. Do you want to come to one week? Do you need her to come to the mm -mm. We would get one week. We get one week. We, yeah, we get one week. Yeah, yeah you'll get a week. Get a week. So, so you'd have to disclose it too. So we would have to disclose it. Um, do we do that in writing? Or no, so verbally? you'll do it verbally. Okay, good. So just as an example, um, I think all you all know there's a there's a landslide at the top of the street that I live on. Right. And right. so there has yeah, been I've legislation you, that's yeah. come through and I've disclosed so that I will, I've recused myself right. from voting if I wanted to vote on it because I thought there was going to be a 
you all wouldn't vote on it. I needed the extra vote. I would have to disclose that I would materially benefit from having part of my street fixed, and then I would take the vote. So with that, we actually need to do a roll call vote. Do we have right to make statements each? Should we each make a statement? Yeah. Yeah. We have effectively made it? OK. OK. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The operating amendment number one has been approved. That exhausts our agenda for today, I believe. Sure does. All righty. Um, We're going right to the exec, right? Yep. Or Madam President, are we going into executive yeah. session? Yes. So members, we're rolling directly into executive session after this um, to speak with our solicitor. And tomorrow will be very long. It will be very <laughs> just, long. Just, just so members very, are aware. Very long. Because we've got all our, we've got all this stuff, uh, as well as other capital and operating budget amendments that are the yearly authorizations that we have to make. And we also have just other bills, period, that are all on the agenda that are just the regular business of the city. So the it's cards are locked till the new year. So there will be no like, could you please send out for pizza because we're starving? Yeah. Well, we can still do you it. We can do it. My staff we just, does it all the time. It just won't, it won't show up until next, next year. year. President will handle that. I mean, we should at least feed the members. All right. You can say in the way someone. I'll get it. Yeah, we can still do it. We just won't yeah. show up till next year. Maybe we don't want people with low blood sugar making votes. Uh, uh, okay. what do we, do we motion to adjourn. So adjourn. Motion to recess. 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are in recess. Mm -hmm.